Hey, Mike, guess what? What? Mike, raging rivers, hungry bears, drastic avalanches, roaring seas, no matter how prepared you are, a walk in the woods can go from innocent to disaster in the blink of an eye. Yeah. When pushed to their breaking point, humans are capable of astonishing things, things that you would never thought of possible. Yeah. Listen to In the Wild as they explore the most heroic, terrifying, and phenomenal stories of real people who survived the unsurvivable. Learn what went wrong, what went right, and how you can make it out alive if the worst case ever happened to you. In the Wild podcast reviews on Apple include Love Your Podcast from Laura. It's scary how relentless nature can be. I always enjoy this podcast at work. It keeps me on the edge of my seat. Or how about we go with Hiker 0001. Uh, Good stories and good narration. I like when there are sound effects that add to the ambience of the story. In the Wild podcast on Apple Podcasts and everywhere you get your podcast downloads. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Why should you listen? Well, we cover technology subjects without a political agenda, verify the facts, and do it with a sense of humor and with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. Welcome to our show today. We live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch TV, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us online at techtimeradio.com. You can tweet us during the show at hashtag Tech Time Radio, and we'll do our best to respond to the tweets on the air. You can also check out our new TikTok channel by looking for Tech Time Radio on the TikTok app. Well, I'm your host, a technologist with 30 years of technology expertise working for Fortune 500 companies across the country. My co-host here, Mike Roday, is an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike helps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We're two friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Glad you're back in the studio. I know last week we had a little snow here in the Pacific Northwest, Mr. Gorday. That's right. Glad to see you back. And did you enjoy your holiday break? Sure. Sure? Is that a yes or Bah humbug. Well, there there you go. All right. Now let's get ready to start today's show. Now on today's show. All right. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum, Twitter restores suicide prevention features. Amazon takes to the air. And have you ever wanted to see what an asteroid can do to your home? You've been spending some time on that app today, well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> we have a chip inventory that is up in arms as consumers are buying fewer gadgets, and there's a, chir- a chip <laughs> surplus. In the- oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, we're going to look back at technology of 2022 with our best of the best reviews on computers, gadgets, and I have the gadgets in the studio today, and video games. We're going to talk about the top list of Tech Times top. We'll see if everybody agrees with that or not. I think there'll be some agreement and probably some non-agreements. In addition, we have our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment, This Week in Technology, and a Nathan Nugget that's been on the Agenda for two weeks. We're going to get to it today. I promise you. That's that. That's my goal. You should never make promises. Uh, we're going to get to it. We'll have extra time at the end if nothing else. And, of uh-huh. course, Let's always see. we have our Try that every week pick of the day work. whiskey tasting during the commercials to see if your selected whiskey picks get zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. 
All right. Story number one. Chip inventory swells as consumers buy fewer gadgets this year. Semiconductor companies slash production plans amid weak demand as the world now has a plethora of microchips. There. You used your word of the day. Uh, There you go. Or word of the year, actually. There you go. Now we're going to go and play an audio clip specifically regarding this topic. Last year, we heard these words a lot. There's a big problem with computer chips right now. The global shortage of computer chips is affecting many automakers. Businesses and consumers across the globe experiencing a computer chip shortage. But in a turn of events rippling through the economy, we now have too many chips. In fact, as we've learned during corporate earnings season, this has led semiconductor companies to pull back on spending and put in place hiring freezes, even layoffs. So how do we get to this point and where does the semiconductor industry go next? The longer term picture seems to be good. It's just about how are people adjusting to tactically to the shorter term stress in the market. And that's the sort of balance that a lot of chip executives are trying to strike right now. How do they you know, limit the kind of capital spending they're doing in the short term, but still expand enough to reap the rewards of rise in demand in the long term? All right, so we got chip inventory, which is swelling as retailers are stuck with goods on their shelves and producers of range of products specifically that were in high demand during the pandemic now face a glut. For instance, that home video conference camera, you know, that no one could get one of those Logitech cameras that were available for your system or any of the conferencing. Mm. They now have shelves and shelves and shelves. You can now I get a- I guess that's what happens when you create a- shortage and people lose interest. That's right. So everybody already bought their same exact camera for $150 where they could find one, and now it's available for $29. Well, you know what? This is good news for the consumers. You can now get their hands on products from washing machines to laptops faster and sometimes more cheaper than a year ago. For chip makers, though, the shift has triggered a wave of job cuts, reduction in capital spending, and many companies that were building on-site locations here in the United States have delayed those construction builds themselves. Much of what you're paying uh, as planning out from the chip manufacturers is illustrated by the reversal of fortunes the gadget markets have experienced in the recent months. HP, Dell, Inc., and two of the largest PC makers say that their products flew off the shelves early in the pandemic, and they're now sitting on there for a much longer, and people want customization instead of standard package. HP's chief executive, Enrique Lorries has said the inventory of consumer-orientated PCs is likely to remain elevated through the next two quarters, although he has pointed to signs that it's beginning to get cleared out. There you go. Chip graphics company NVIDIA Corporation, America's largest chip company by value, has said excess inventory could mute the benefits of recently announced next-generation or super-fast video gaming chips. NVIDIA's customers say that they can now purchase these, though, to help with their crypto mining processes. You know, all those... Crypto miners that were expensive and expensive to get. Now you can buy these same exact chips because they're just sitting around and no one's buying them and you can mine cryptocurrency. Yeah. So you can buy yourself a Trump NFT. There you go. All right. Story number two. Now you're excited about this. Tell us about tell us about your new toy. I spent a lot of time playing with this one. (laughs) Okay. Uh, have you ever wondered what it would be like for an asteroid collision to hit the earth? Um, I, I will say yes, because I've played with it, but if, I'll say no. Tell okay. me about it. No, I don't know. <laughs> what, what's it like? Well, if you want to uh, find an interesting quote-unquote game. Okay. Well, that's kind of an app, though. It's an educational it's an app, app, right? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Head on over to HTTPS dot forward or colon forward slash forward slash Neil.fun slash asteroid launcher. Okay. And it will let you simulate yeah. an asteroid impact on the Earth. Okay, so you so you've done this. So yes. what so, so what have you blown up? Uh pretty much anything I could think of. Okay, did you blow so up New York? It it's yeah, I blew up New York. I blew up uh the local area here. Okay. It it basically allows you it's a simulator, it allows you to Pick a, an asteroid of different composite materials, okay. uh, from iron to gold to stone to just a comet, uh, up to a mile in diameter. Okay, and allows it to hit the Earth at very various speeds, up to I think two hundred fifty thousand miles per hour, 
And these are simulated uh, like realistic. It, this is, these are well, realistic numbers, right? I don't know if how realistic this is. This 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 man uh, Neil Argerwall, yep, is a programmer who does these types of games. Okay. So I don't know how scientifically backed this is, but it's interesting nonetheless because it shows you the impact crater, gives you an idea of how 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 many wide, people dies. A, wide an impact crater was, how many people would die in the blast, how many people, how how big the fireball is that would uh, result from the impact, the amount of trees that can be blown down in a certain radius, a the amount of uh, wind that's generated by one of these impacts, the amount of uh, the earthquake uh, registry that it Afterwards, would cause. Afterwards, because it would cause? Uh, so yeah, so this so, is awesome. I, yeah, I I goofed around on this for several <laughs> several minutes today, <laughs> hours. Uh, uh-huh. it, we're like about thirty minutes, and I I you know the inquiring mind that I did, you know, I I I used all the materials available. Okay, uh, I didn't do that. I compared, just did. The, compared I, did I did different in, angles though. There's did, like angles projectors. Yeah, there's, there's there. I did them all on the same angle in the same speed okay. and wanted to find out the, you know, how, what the impact crater is. Like if you Is gold a, stronger? Which what's, gold, what's the worst well, one Well, if you use? use gold, it's interesting. If you use gold at a slower rate yeah. and a, a, uh, about a 60 something degree angle, it gives you a really small crater. But if you crank it up to uh, a mile wide, it's yeah. the biggest crater. It's like 25 miles in diameter. Okay. So, All right. So where can we find this app again? HTTP, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Neil dot fun slash asteroid space launcher. And that will be in the show notes that we post yes, after the show. Yes, that will be in too? the show notes. It is uh, developed by Neil Argawal, who does these kind of things quite often. Okay. And this was quite fun. And it's it's free to for, do. It's free to do for all you the, for all of you out there that like the... The destructive dystopian future types. This yeah. is something that, and if you want to get back at, say, like an ex-wife or something, <laughs> you know. That's so Arizona got bombed a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Story number three. On Friday, Twitter restored the suicide prevention feature that was taken down by the social media platform's new owner, Elon Musk. The feature known as hashtag there is help, like hashtag tech time radio. Uh, but hashtag there is what? help has been restored after. Are you serious? Well, I just put the, our hashtag in there so I could to, to do a plug. There you go. Uh, has been restored after coming under pressure from some users and consumer safety groups about its removal. Twitter's head of trust and safety, Ella Irwin, confirmed the removal and that it has now been restored. Let's listen in on our next story as Amazon takes to the air in story number four. On Friday, Amazon began deliveries using Prime Air Drones in Lockford, California and College Station, Texas. Amazon hopes to use feedback from the service to improve its operations and eventually scale the service nationwide. All right, so Amazon now is delivering drones. Is this a fad, Mike, or is this going to be the wave of the future? That that's a that's a difficult question to answer. Well, like in a day like today, I don't I don't really see that there's going to be a lot of drones flying around. When you got a windstorm and you got but, rain coming down, I, it kind yeah. of would defeat the purpose. It, huh? it, it's it's it seems to me that there's a lot of uh, value in something like this at first. Okay, and then people will be like, nah. As I think as soon as these roll out and we start seeing all the problems these create, like yeah. uh, BB packages, guns. well, yeah, kids, <laughs> BB people guns with and BB kids. guns and two rifles, and, <laughs> yeah, and eagles attacking them, and yep. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, Amazon is now delivering them in two places. It's amazing. Both of them are very sunny. You got Texas and California. Yeah, as yeah I like to see that up. I, it's it's kind of interesting that they haven't. Done it up here where the Amazon headquarters are. Well, we had a big snowstorm that came on in, and I know Amazon must have been fretting because they had all these deliveries before Christmas, and I, I got packages delivered to the wee hours in the middle of the night well, for people dropping yeah, off they've packages. Come, they've come under fire for years and years for the for the way they push their delivery service. So I don't know. Maybe this will maybe this will help take the pressure off of that. But uh, did you I see Amazon having like fifteen hundred employees, <laughs> and all they have is these little screens? 
and computers and there are all these people driving these drones around? Because you still have to have somebody I, it, supervising yeah, it. Yeah, you right? have to some have camera. somebody. I'm, I'm, I suddenly went <clears> to that <throat> video game Joust like in the yeah. 80s, you know? Yeah, where you, you have to be a higher than the other one. So you have to you know, get you all hit the these, egg comes out. Get all these drones jousting with each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that ends our top stories in the first five minutes. Moving on as we get ready for our next segment, the best of the best from Tech Times 2000. And 22 in review. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Hey, Mike, I'm looking for some help writing our blog post for Tech Time Radio. Uh, well, you should try Phosphor AI. It's an online service that will save you hours of work with your content creation. Simply type in your title and their AI software will get to work writing a high quality original article for you. You'll need to review the article and take 15 to 20 minutes to make necessary edits before publishing. But You'll get free articles just for signing up so you can try out the service and see how it works for you. How many articles do I get free? I, I already said you get three free articles. You should listen when I'm talking to you. Phosphor AI pricing is very reasonable for the quality of content that you'll get. Why waste time writing the content yourself when you get Phosphor AI to do it for you? Visit them online today at Phosphor AI. Again, that's P-H-O-S-P-H-O-R-A-I. Com. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time Radio is in a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Roday. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break, and now we have Mark in studio. Mark has moved up from... Uh, the Portland area to the Seattle area, so he may become more of a regular. He is on the show now to tell us about our pick of the day. So, Mark, what have you chosen for us to taste today? For your 133rd episode, yeah. we have chosen the Stellum Black Rye. So that's made by Stellum Spirits, which is owned by Barrel Craft Spirits. Okay. It's a distillation. It's an unknown distillate, but it's a blend of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee distilleries. It's a blend of straight rye. It's non-age stated. It's 114.26 proof. Ooh. Mash bill is undisclosed, but you know it's at least 51% rye. And it's the price for a bottle is slightly under $100, at least in Oregon, at $96.70. Wow. <coughs> it does have a... It's strong. It's got a kick there. It, yeah. It's got a kick. I don't... Do you have to add water to it, or do you let it air out a little bit? Does it get a little uh, bit? For you guys, you're welcome to. I'm nice and smooth the way it goes down. You're a straight, straight mm. rye guy. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not a big fan of rye. So uh, this is kind of. Uh, all right, let me although, tell you a little. Although about the finish it. is okay. nice. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, you can't. You don't do too much for your marks mumbles. No, I'm not find doing out that. What not special yet. day it is today, or somewhere in the world? So. That's later. But okay. it, this is according to Stellum. Okay. And Stellum is star in Latin. Oh. Stellum Black Rye is an evolution of the Stellum Rye flavor profile. Think of it as Stellum Rye in high def, because this is the cast strength version. Okay. They use a meticulous blending approach to layer older reserve barrels into the original Stellum Rye blend. The result is a surprisingly mellow cast strength rye whiskey, combining iconic rye spice with a deep complexity that reveals new facets with every sip. Buttery and rich on the palate with flavors of chocolate mint, star anise, and the sesame that leaves a finish of fresh dill and cracked black peppercorns that is slow and warming. Yeah, I tasted every one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sipping it, Mike. Okay. Wow. I, I if it, let's, see how it, let's see how it plays out over the, over the, over the show. Well, now that we got our whiskey out of the way, uh, we have our last show of the year, meaning the season five starts next year. Do you, really, do you believe we're on season five? No. We're on year three in season five because we do it kind of on each of our big intervals that we have. So we have done 133 episodes. It's a lot of episodes. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. It's yeah. A, it's a part of my everyday life. There you go. All right. Well, now it's time. What's that? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what are you going to say? Nothing. You're going to say it's a part of your lifestyle too? No. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, now we're going to look back at... The best of the best for 2022. The headlines that define 2022 were seismic and historic. Europe's largest armed conflict since World War II. The death of a monarch 
who had reigned for 70 years. 2022 has been a year of incredible accomplishment in space exploration. From Artemis to DART to SpaceX to the next generation of astronauts preparing for a return to the moon. The TikTok takeover took hold this year, drawing in more than 1 billion active users. And it wasn't just dance trends. People found new ways to get real following major world events gaining traction across all of social media, like tracking the realities of war after Russia invaded Ukraine. 2022 was a year that introduced us to those harnessing the power to change tomorrow. All right. So that was kind of in the world that's going on there. What's that? <laughs> You didn't like any of that? TikTok was really big. Yeah. So TikTok's a billion users. I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of 2022. Really? Yeah. Why is that? We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> tell, tell me more of that. We, we can go into an old canceling session there, can't we? All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to start first about video games, all right? <clears throat> now. Yeah, that's a good place to start. If you, if you want to disagree with me, you can. But here's what I got. It's hard to dispute it that Elden Ring dominated 2022. The year was a string of big releases Throughout fall and winter, but the first chunk of 2022 was essentially Elden Ring territory. Do you have that game? Yes. Is it good? Yes. But, okay, let me just tell you about about this game. I've spent probably 40 hours in this game, and I think I'm only on, like, level three or four. There's, there's like, a gazillion bosses. Well, this is... the, like the Elder Scrolls. Right? It's, uh, yeah, this so it's a, a continuation of that whole. Well, I think it's supposed to do with Thief. Isn't it Thief? It's supposed to be like Thief 2 in that type of universe. Oh, I don't know. So, all right. I, I actually don't have this game, so I don't know what it's well, like. Do you need to borrow it? I have it. No. You can borrow it on your Xbox. I don't have enough time. Okay. <laughs> all right. You can sink 100 hours into this to only scratch the surface. And now here is Tech Time's favorite game of the years. And we're going to start off with number three. And number three on our rating is Elden Ring. It's a fantasy action role-playing game set with danger and discovery lurking around every corner. It's from From Softwares, and it's the giant, most largest explorable world game to date, which means that you can literally walk across it for, I think it's like six hours until you get to one side or the other of the map itself. And it's all within a constant world. Okay. All right. So many hours and boss fights will keep you engaged and a little disengaged throughout this game. It's developer from software. It's role playing action RPG. So yes, Elden Ring is excellent. Plenty of publications will be awarding it Game of the Year, which it surely deserves. But it's not on ours because our Tech Time favorite. It only comes in ranked third. Now moving on up to the next rank, we have Return to Monkey Island. Develop. Er is Terrible Toy Box. It's an adventure point and click. I couldn't ignore Return to Monkey Island. Like many my age, 49 plus, the original Monkey Island games hit at a very formative period. Nonetheless, I'm obsessed with the series as a teen, and the Return to Monkey Island designed as a direct sequel to the first two games comes from the creator Ron Gilbert. It was nostalgic, and I couldn't resist, and Return to Monkey Island didn't disappoint. If anything, it it exceeded my expectations. I expected comfort food, but got a video game that did justice to a legendary series and reinnervated the entire genre. Okay. Okay. I have none of these games. After returning to Monkey Island, I'm ready to play more old school graphic click and click and but you you can so you can play Monkey Island. It's free if you have an Ultimate Game Pass, and I know you do. Yeah. So you have an Ultimate Game Pass. You can download it today on your Xbox or PC or Mac. It's available it's on all platforms. It's not an original Xbox? It's not an original oh. Xbox game. It's a Return to Monkey. None of these are uh, independently specific just to Xbox. Okay. Because well, I know I just got like 1,500 original Xbox games. Uh, 1,500 original Xbox games? Yeah. Did you get that for Christmas? I did. Uh, Santa Claus must have treated you well. All right. And the winner... Is an independent studio release of a game about a movie. Actually, there's three of them in this game itself called Immortality. Have you seen this game? Nope. Oh my gosh. I've this, is addi- of these this is addictive as heck. Okay, the developer is Half Mermaid. The release date was late August 30th, 2022. It's available on iPhone, iPad, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, anything that you needed available. So the summary is uh, Mrs. Marcel is a film star. She made three movies, but none of these movies were ever released. And Marissa Marcel disappeared. An interactive trilogy from Sam Barlow creates her story. Immortality is something special. It'll take some time to understand. What you do is you piece together each film's narrative in order 
so that you can see the actual conclusion. On top of that, it's a darker, more mysterious narrative. Makes it easily the top game of the year and a must-play for film and fan and story-driven game players. This officially wins game of the year. What's that? Okay, all right. Number, we're now going to move to the best desktop for 2022. It's a tie. We have two units. One's a Mac, a 2021 model, and the other is a PC. And speaking about both of these, Let's look back at a little Apple marketing. Hello, I'm a Mac. I'm a PC. Ready to get started? Oh, not quite. Got a lot to do. What's your big plan? I might uh, make a home movie or maybe create a website, try out my built-in camera. I can do it all right out of the box. So what about you? Well, uh, first I got to download those new drivers and I got to erase the trial software that came on my hard drive. Sweet. Then I've got a lot of manuals to read. You know, it sounds like you have a lot of stuff to do before you do any stuff. So I'm just going to get started because I'm kind of excited. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> Actually... The rest of me's in some other boxes, so I'll meet up with you later. All right. Do you remember those ad campaigns? Yes. <laughs> Hilarious, right? No. No. <laughs> no. Why? Because you're a big PC lover. I, I'm a PC guy. So you see, when you saw those ads, would you be like, ah. You know, it's funny because I like the actor that does the, the Mac, but I don't like the commercials about the Mac. Okay. Well, guess what? This year, you're going to be happy and disappointed because we have a tie for first place. Okay. So we're, we're, we're going to give out that participation seems, that seems, ribbons that seems, to everybody. That seems, that seems rather uh, <laughs> bogus, but well, go ahead. All right. The 24-inch iMac is an impressive all-in-one PC and is on my top PC of the year. The display is a 24-inch 4480 by 25020. Display special features include 1080p webcam, uh, great speakers, that Apple M1 chip, 8-core with 7-core GPU, and it's available for one thousand two hundred and ninety nine bucks. The Apple M1 chip is fantastic. It does a gorgeous display, a great 1080p web camera, speakers, and the M1 chip is essentially what I have on this PC right here <coughs> on my laptop. It works fantastic. For thirteen hundred dollars, you can have the best Mac, in my opinion, available on the market. Now, move over Mac because not only do we have the Mac. But we also have, this isn't going to surprise you, an Alienware computer. Who makes Alienware? Dell. Dell. Do you like Alienware? Yes. That is your go-to PC, isn't it? Well, yes. That, that is my gaming computer. All right. So this is the Alienware Aurora R13. This is VR ready. It has an Intel Core i7. It's 64 gigabyte graphics card. You can put in as whatever you want up there, up to a two terabyte uh, SSD that comes standard. It comes with a multimedia keyboard, mouse, everything you need to run all of your games. Now, this isn't quite in that budget price line. So <clears throat> if I'm buying a Mac, I'm going to go a little bit more budget conscience. Essentially, for the Aurora R1300 that I'm talking about right here, core price is three k Yep. $3,000. It's far from cheap, but powerful enough to play the latest and greatest games at 1080p for years to come. And if you have yourself a great big television, which I know you do, Mike, mm -hmm. you could hook it up to there and you could have essentially a huge 4K frame rate to watch all of your gaming aspects. All right. Now we're going to get on to gadgets. All right. <coughs> Tell gadgets. me more. Well, hang on here. So the gadget's not charged up all the way, but this is the device right here. And I'm going to have you guys try it. We'll have you guys wear this when you get down to... Uh, uh, Apple yeah, Beast I'm not putting poster. that on in a freaking restaurant. <laughs> All right, so so this is an eye massager. You're like, what the heck, yeah, right? Okay, whatever. Okay, that's exactly what I said. This is the eye massager. It's called the Renofo eye massager with heat, air compression, Bluetooth music, rechargeable eye therapy massager to relieve eye strain, dark circles, eye bags, and to eliminate headaches. Now, what about black eyes? <laughs> you got a black eye, you can't do much about it. Oh. So you put this on. It puts heat and pressure on your eyes. Now, I laughed at this device. It was sitting at home. My wife got this, and I'm like, mm. yeah, whatever. I put this on. I literally put this on at least weekly. And what will happen is I'll put it on, and it massages the eyes so well that afterwards your eyesight is better. Now, they don't claim that that's what it helps <laughs> for, and it sounds like some placebo. Yeah, I right? don't really think that happens. Well, okay, so we're going we're gonna to test this later if, on. If you get... If you get it relaxes Less your eye. eye strain. I can understand how you might be. Everything is clear. visually uh, visually 
more adaptable, but you can't well, I think say your that eyes have stress, your vision. right? So you have stress with your eyes, right? So when you relax them, it, it, everything that's blurry comes in clearer when you're done massaging. Okay, all right. So. All right. I, I now have a pyramid scheme, and he can buy in, and the next I person bet. can buy. No, so this is available on Amazon now. My wife says you got to watch the prices, so you can pay anywhere between fifty to sixty bucks for it right now. If you bought it, it's one hundred and thirty-five dollars on Amazon. Okay, now it gets all the way up to with the heated pads to one hundred and four to one hundred seven degrees Fahrenheit. So you have this nice heat pressure as it massages, and it feels like someone's massaging your eyes. It's got these pressure points. You're gonna have to try it tonight. Okay. Now the second thing I have, <laughs> okay, we talked about. It is amazing. These are now we talked about this on the show already. Remember that? Uh, I do remember that. Okay, yeah. so this is called the M Classic. Better graphics, better pixels, better gameplay. It's a game console graphic processor. So essentially, you plug this into your game console, specifically older generations, like a Dreamcast, like a Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. like a Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega, uh, anything that has an outport video that can support VGA, and you plug this into the VGA port of that game, and then you plug your VGA cable on the end part of this into your television. And what it does is it enhances the graphics. There's a toggle switch to leave it normal. If you toggle it to mid area, (coughs) what it'll do is it'll have some graphic enhancements, but what it'll do is it'll take an old pixelated Mario Brothers individual specifically super nintendo is great dreamcast is great and the like virtual fighter and you had all those pixels when you fought and it'll actually smooth those all out play those at a 30 uh second frame rate Mm -hmm. back into your hd monitor and everything is smooth okay you know have have you ever played diddy con and all those things where your your character has all those really yeah but you know when i want to play something classic like donkey kong i kind of want the classic feel of it too so okay so there's a switch here why i would want to put it into a smoother pixelated well maybe would your son want to have more better pixels he doesn't know what classic games are okay so so he but you could put that in if you hit the switch over that would look nice and pretty for him and then if you want to go classic you can switch it back this is available right this is this was nathan mum's uh big gift of the uh giving campaign for all my relatives will it work on wii it does absolutely and it changes your wii from 1080i to 1080p oh see now that that i could so you should, I could get behind that. Okay, so it's a big difference. You you actually notice a difference, and it, and it's because uh, when I put when I hook up my your Wii my <coughs> Wii to my my TV, it's all blurry. Using, it, yeah, it's blurry because the the television can't support yep. the old. So you get yourself an M Classic, ninety nine bucks on Amazon or any go. place that sells the M Classic. Okay, I can I can deal with that. All right, you can deal with that. I you, should, you know what you can take this home and try it if you want to try it out. But you got to bring it back because I use it for my Dreamcast. No, okay. No. It goes home with me. It stays home with me. Ah, okay. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well, that ends our segment, the best of 2022. If you want to find out any more about the information that we have here, you can always visit us online at techtimeradio.com. We're going to head out on a commercial break. When we ha- come on back, we're going to have our This Week in Technology. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that? Something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. TurboDebt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over 10000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized for a free consultation today. TurboDebt is a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going back old school here. December 26th, 1982. That's not really that old. No. You were still around during that time. Yeah, I was in high school. Okay, Time Magazine. Now, they have a big award they do, right? They do... Uh, it used to be Man of the Year. I think that now it's now per- just Person of person the Year. Person of the Year. Yep. So, but it used to be called Man of the Year. 
Time Magazine awards its Man of the Year award to a personal computer. This is record-breaking. Never before had Time chosen their Person of the Year or Man of the Year to be a machine. Calling it Machine of the Year, the first non-human to receive the award since its creation in 1927. Describing the personal computer. Well, What's that? You know, it doesn't really give a whole lot of options there since that was the dawn of the computer era anyway. It was, was. I mean, 82 yeah. is a big year. If you go back and you start yeah. looking at 80, 81, 82, 83 are huge years in the computer industry. That's mm-hmm. when everybody had an 8008, a 286. Trash 80. Yep, trash 80. Everybody had one and, or at least had something with WordStar on it or some old computer that they had that they would use for word processing and basic Excel formulas. And people were like, wow, I'll never, ever need to worry about spreadsheets again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, the greatest influence for good or evil, they titled the article, the computer moves in that recognize the capabilities of the personal computer that could be manipulated, uh, and, sorry, can be multiplied among indefinite by connecting its network to other computers, which can be used to access electronic databases or send electronic email. You've got mail. The article states that 80% of Americans expected that in the fair new future, which would have been a year or two after, Home computers will be as commonplace as a television set or dishwasher. Oh, it's more so. Actually, more so. Beating out the candidates such as Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, Time stated, there are some occasions, though, there are more significant force in the year's news that it's not a single individual but a process and a widespread recognition of a whole society and the process is changing the course of others. That's why after weighing the ebb and flow of events around the world, time decided that 1982 is the year of the personal computer. 7,240 personal computers were sold in 1980. 724,000 were sold in 1980. And this figure doubled in 1981 and 1982. Certainly these are small attention gathers at the time as the personal computer has continued to transform our society. Just think of how many computers we have in this room right now. Oh, I know. <laughs> I have one of my. Okay, essentially, your phone's a computer. I've got. So I've I got, got two three phones. Three on my. Oh, no, I've got four on my person. Okay, you have four with you right now. Yep, I've got two laptops. Okay, and two phones. I got a laptop, two phones. Right, Mark's over there on his phone right now. So he's got a phone. Do you have a laptop here too? No, he's got a phone. And Odie's got five computers behind the uh, board right now, and her, and phone, her phone. So six. Yeah. So just think of that as a computer back in the time. Remember in the eighties. We'd, you would have to sit down at your computer, go on in, and you'd have to type in. Most of the time, you typed in stuff. Yeah, those were the good old days. No cut and paste. Cut and paste didn't even exist then. You realize that? Sometimes in these early no. 80s, cut and paste didn't exist. So you had to type in every word that you had on that area. What do you think now? Control C, Control V? I mean, I mean, that's like a part of everyday life, right? Yeah, hotkeys, man. Yeah. So there you go. Well. That was our This Week in Technology. And the, more, the more they advance computer technology, the worse my life gets. <laughs> they said the whole idea of computers were supposed to give us more personal free time. I, I'm, I'm upset <laughs> about that because that was the promise of technology back then was that it would make my life simpler. You could be on the beach it, and enjoy yeah, life and, and you wouldn't have to worry more, about stuff. The more, the more technology, technological advance we get, the more stress I have. You know, I mean, like I text you on something. If I don't hear back from you in like an hour, I get anxious. For you, because you haven't responded to my darn text. Yeah, that's FOMO, buddy. Is that FOMO? Yes. Okay, well, I just want to listen to your text so much. That's what it oh, is. Oh, I'm, I'm right. sure. All right, that was This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of video, podcast, and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk to us live all the time. Nothing's better than that. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. When we turn, we have Mark's Mumbles in studio, Whiskey Review, and we have our technology fail of the week. We'll see you after the break. Tech Time Radio is brought to you today by Nutility, the platform that makes utility management seamless by selecting your service providers, splitting a single bill amongst roommates, and then shutting off your service when it's time for you to move out. Nutility reviews your preferences and sets up all the utilities for you. This provides you with the best local provider in your service area. It's much easier than splitting up your bills between roommates. No more late Larry not being able to get to you on time to make the payments, and no more 
Venmo charges or PayPal charges. One place to do your billing so that everybody pays on time. Now, how can you use this great service from Nutility, you ask? Aha. Uh-huh. Well, you can absolutely get it now and get three months for free. That's correct. If you go to Nutility.com. Again, it kind of sounds like utility, but it's Nutility.com. Use the tech code 3. And again, that's N-U-T-I-L-I-T-I.com. Get your first three months for free using the code TECH3. The segment we've been waiting all week for. Mark's Whiskey Mumble. We really wait all week for that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Today we celebrate Nathan again. Again? <laughs> again. Why? It's National Fruitcake Day. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. A day to celebrate every eccentric person That's you know. <laughs> Happy birthday, Fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's not right. It's a day for lovers of fruitcake to rejoice in the delight of the world's most misunderstood food. There Ooh. can't be that many people that like fruitcake. But it's fruitcake is a boozy, chewy, rich agamag of dry fruits, nuts, Christmas vacation sugar. Algum? It's saturated with your favorite alcohol. How can you not like it when it's fresh? I don't know. I've never had fresh fruitcake. Uh, well, that's the problem. That's, you, you know, you... you, you you pass it along. You pass it forward. You pass it forward. <laughs> I don't For even know. If, I don't need, I don't even know if people make fruit cake anymore. I remember that was a big thing when I was a kid. Your grandma would make fruit cake, and everybody'd be like, "That." <laughs> <laughs> Does he get fruit cake with the uh, cat food in it? We had. Remember that in the National oh, Lampoon's the, Christmas oh, yeah, vacation. Christmas vacation. That was Jello, buddy. That was. Oh, yeah, was that Jello? That wasn't, oh, oh, get it. Get get. Oh, get right. you, you be quiet get right, here. Get okay. right with your. He's a little centric. Yeah, he's fruit cake. All right, let's talk about selling black rye whiskey. This accomplishes what Stellan Black Bourbon and other ryes have not been able to do for me. It is well worth the extra expense than the 55 interjection whiskey it is based off of. There's just no mistake in Stellan Black Rye for any other rye currently on the market. After a few weeks with this, with this bottle, I notice that it is almost gone. It is a bottle that I think about each time I head to my whiskey closet thinking, what sounds good for me tonight? <laughs> that means that it is truly special for me. I will also give all of you a heads up that you need to buy this rye right now because I'm not sure how available it is. I would like to do a shout out to Tony, who owns North by Northeast Liquor on Williams Avenue in Oregon, who is currently the only liquor store in Oregon that's currently carrying this rye. I bought his first one that he brought in as a specialty order, and I even gone back to pick up my second bottle. I believe he's only got about seven left. Uh Uh-oh. Not wow. anymore. So this is a huge okay, thumbs up for me. So how do you get to a store if you're listening in California or listening well, in actually, Atlanta? Well, actually, I, t- I took a look at your Road total trip. wines. Yeah. So I can't find it in Washington, but it is available in a few in California. Okay. And then across the country, yeah. I'm sure there's other locations. You get a phone number or a, 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 a address so you can have that taken care of. So, yeah, this is, this is one that I have been truly enjoying. I know it's a rise. I don't know how Mike's doing on it, but we will see. Well, Mark, thank you for your mumble. Thank yes. you. Now let's get ready for our technology fail of the week, brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh, I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. This week's fail comes to us from Epic Games. And this mainly focuses on the game Fortnite. Have you ever heard of this game called Fortnite? Of course. I well, have played it. My son plays it. And, and do you enjoy it? Oh, that's fun. Well, we're going to talk yeah. a little bit about it. Epic Games has to pay $520 million for privacy violations and dark patterns. Do you know what dark patterns means? Tell me. Well, dark patterns is when you actually put in deceiving concepts and to have, having people think that they're getting something for free or thinking that they're getting it for a discount and they actually sign up for it, not realizing that there's a larger cost associated. So, so it's like social media. Well, it's like any of those uh, streaming services that I hopefully I'll be talking about on my nugget today. You know, you pay the first month 
a dollar ninety nine ninety nine cents, and then after the twelve months is over, boom, they're going to get you up to nineteen bucks or whatever it is type of deal. Well, the Federal Trade Commission (FTC) says Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite, will pay fifty two million to settle allegations of violating children's privacy laws and the use of dark patterns to trick millions of gamers into making unintentional in game purchases. While Fortnite is free to download and play, Epic charges players for in-game items like dance, move, and costumes. Fortnite has a huge player base of more than 400 million users worldwide, according to the FTC. For an example, players could be charged while attempting to wake the game up from sleep mode. While the game was in a loading screen or by pressing an adjacent button while attempting to simply preview an item, the FTC explained. These tactics led to hundreds of millions of dollars in unauthorized chargers for consumers. The company also alleged charged account holders, the children and teen parents, hundreds of dollars without authorization and locked players' accounts after they disputed the unauthorized charge. So here's what they did. They charge you. Mm -hmm. You call up and say, hey, I didn't really buy that. And they say, oh, yes, you did. And if you keep on persisting to say, no, you didn't have that taken care of, they said, fine, then we'll just get rid of your account. So all that other stuff... They Elon you. Uh, so, <laughs> hey now, hey now. So essentially what they do is they had unauthorized charges that were being sent. Uh, when you complain about it, Epic would just delete your account. Epic ignored more than 1 million user complaints and repeated employee concerns that huge numbers of users were being wrongfully charged, the FTC added. In fact, Epic's changes only made the problem worse, the FTC alleged, using internal testing Epic purposefully obscured cancel and refund features to make them more difficult to find. So instead of having them easily to be taken care of, you'd have to find them underneath yeah, hidden yeah. menus to, to get a return. That's right. What do you think about that? <laughs> As our fail? Well, it is a fail. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's not actually a f- fail because it worked. It did but work. the fact that they got pwned by the FTC. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty big, that's a hefty But this is this is... This is all part of the business models of a lot of these game companies. Which is and not only game companies, but other other companies as well. Okay. So the whole idea of these like those ones on your app. Like your phone. Your phone apps. Yeah. Those stupid those stupid free games you'll download something and then those play to win games and play to play. (laughs) Yeah, and then pay to play. and, and, And it's interesting that Fortnite what a monopoly. So essentially, if you complained, we'll just get rid of your account. So all that money that you spent, and this is the problem. Yeah, I mean, this is all this Sea is of all Thieves. We play a game, right? It's called Sea of Thieves. <coughs> Punishment, right? yeah. Now, I've put in some money into Sea of Thieves besides know, buying the which game. which is funny because you're like, I'll never pay real money. Well, now stuff. I've paid a lot of money. Like, oh, okay, okay. I'll wait and see that happen. Okay, so now I got a bunch of costumes. So I pay money in that game. If mm-hmm. I complain too much about them and they delete my account, all that money that I've invested into that game... Just goes out the yeah, out like the door. Crypto. Yeah, it just disappears. All right. There you go. That was your uh, uh, fail of the week. Now we're going to head out to our last commercial break. When we return, we have Mike's Mesmerizing Moment brought to us by Story Coffee, a possible Nathan Nugget. We're going to get to it. And a pick of the day. So sit back, raise a glass. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. Now it's time to get to our highlighted segment of the day with Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to you by Story Coffee. This is Mike's mesmerizing moment presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. The maker of the popular video game Fortnite that we just talked about violated child privacy laws and tricked users into making purchases. Explain to me why we are so infatuated with the in-game purchases as consumers. Well, I was going to talk about this last week, but the question was, why are we addicted to these games? Yep. And that's, that, that's part and parcel to what you're talking about today. It's, we, all have a, we all have a need to individuate ourselves in life. Okay. So we have our style, we have our identity, 
and we automatically transfer that to these type of games. The, the, these these formats have taken on a position to grant them money by offering ways to individuate yourself okay. in the game. So, you know, you're talking about these, they're called skin Skins. purchases, right? Yep. So you, you get on there and you, you like want to be an individual in the game and not use the regular avatar in the game. You pay to, to get that particular thing. And in what goes on neurochemically is that when we do that, we get serotonin and dopamine shots to our brain, which is pleasure okay. particles. It keeps us coming back and it gets us more and it gets us more and it gets us more. And so it's in actual in actuality is rewarding our behavior of spending that money so that we're more likely to spend it again. And then on the flip side, by punishing you by for complaining, yeah, they're saying, "Well, we're gonna we're going to take this away from you if you complain." And so you better like us. So Otherwise, you better like us, or we're going to we're going to punish you, and you're going to experience pain because you spent all this time and money individuating yourself, and now it's going to be lost, irregard ir, irrespective of whether or not there's there's the ability to actually see that in a in a group format. All right, that was, that was our Mike's mesmerizing moment. All right, we have we got two minutes left, Odie. How many minutes do we got left? We got. We're going to oh, try and go oh, for it. We're going to do you? this. Let's get ready for the Nathan Nugget. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, here we, we go. I talked more. All right, now here we go. As a former CEO of Warner Media predicts only three major entertainment companies will survive in the streaming space. Many consumers believe there are so many streaming services that they just want to get back to cable. Yeah, we talked about this. At a staff meeting. We didn't we do talked, it on the air. No, actually, I think we'd have before a little bit, we yeah. started talking about all these companies. But this is the first time an executive plus, plus, come on up. Yeah, this is the first time an executive says that they only expect three to make it. Mm -hmm. So if you think of everything that's out there, you got Paramount, you got Disney, you got. I would say it would be Disney Plus. Disney will probably make it. Uh, HBO. I think Apple's going to buy Disney. So there'll be Apple Plus and Disney will be combined at some time in the future. Okay. You think there'll be HBO still? Yeah. Okay. I know they're getting. I know they're. You think Netflix I know survives? Getting, I, no. I think Ooh. Netflix will survive. I think, so will Hulu. I think Hulu will survive. I think Nick. I think Netflix would would die out. Really? I actually think they're going to make it. They got so much original programming now that I think that they can actually uh, maybe. They have, they're they, only bad here in the U.S. because, like, around the world, they're basically the same as it was before. Yeah, but the way the way that they're going about all yeah this in the world stuff so, yeah let's talk about that so in the UK and all this other stuff I I think they are in trouble and and they're trying and they're trying to keep their head above water. I don't. So think if I search for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure here in the United States, I cannot find it. Yeah. If I go and I'm on the UK, if I'm in Europe, like a VPN, and, and, and if I have a VPN service, which I do, right? Okay. Yeah, and you so got that you. little gleam in your <laughs> eye there, so, saying I, I, that I that can may actually, not be the, the okay. most. Uh, <laughs> well, hang on. So if I go over to the UK and I look at it, essentially, guess what? It is available. To, uh, they have all of the old movies available for you to search. Yeah, that's because their licensing over there is different from exactly. our licensing here, but but. They might Think, die here, but around places the world, like they're places make like it. Disney and stuff, they they put out those licenses. Well, there's just too much TV to watch now. Maybe you remember Marty McFly and Back to the well, Future Two. I, I think he's I watching think, 99 stations. Yeah, I think I think people are logically going back to cable. Yeah, simply because sixty bucks. Simply because simply because it it offers them the ability to get what they want. Yeah, but, but cable has ads. All these. Yeah, no, so it's called commercials. Yeah, now you, if I'm watching a streaming service, I, I hate that. Well, yeah, but I if you're paying, if you're paying, if you're paying, uh, two hundred dollars a month for separate streaming services, yep, you're more, you're probably more than willing to take a Dang. little more pain by suffering through those ads and average order person to watch those seventy nine dollars a month get the, for streaming to services to get the same thing because. Because with all these streaming services competing for your attention, they're also competing for your wallet. Yep. All right, now let's move to our pick of the day. Okay. All right. And oh, now our pick the of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, what's our whiskey we have here again, Mark? 
This is Stellum Black Label Rye. Black re- Label Rye. What do you think about this? Okay, I'm going to split it out. I'm going to say as as far as rye goes, this is kind of a, a nice, yeah, a thumbs nice down. rye. Thumbs but down. overall, I'm just thinking I'm going to give it. A oh, thumbs down. It's three <laughs> thumbs down. Well, everybody, don't listen to them. These guys don't know their whiskey. This I'm is not a, a rye guy. Rye. I'm, I've been up front with saying I'm not a rye guy. So uh, that's, that's my, actually my why I brought down. it in. You ditched me on Sea of Thieves last night, so I decided to bring a rye. <laughs> with me. Oh, 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 that's it. Huh? That was it. I had a different wheat, sweet wheat for you, and I changed it. Uh, wow. Well, like, but it, but like I said, as far as rye goes, it's it's fairly tasty. No, it's it not. is so it's, good. It's got it's a, a very bucks. it's got a very strong upfront yeah. burn. If you don't like rye, I could, I, I could buy ten it. of of my cheap whiskeys for the price. All right. Yeah, well, but for, <laughs> for, for all of you guys, oh. drunk. And remember, the science oh. of tomorrow starts with the technology of day. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks That's for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio all one word we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you from all of us at tech time radio remember mum's the word have a safe and fantastic week